Here's how Stephen Curry is still being doubted by the mainstream media, despite winning finals MVP and securing his fourth championship. ESPN has no shame with their agenda to put the chef down at all costs, so it's necessary that in today's video, I respond to the incorrect narratives being forced down the throat of millions by first shining a light on the blasphemy being spewed, but then displaying how Steph's used all of it as merely fuel to his fire. Right before that, only 13.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please drop a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. That's at dflowhoops. In his post-game response after closing out the finals in six, Stephen Curry already addressed this embarrassment from ESPN's finest, who just over 12 months ago predicted Steph would win zero rings in the next four seasons. I'm paraphrasing, but Curry stated in that post-game interview that he clearly remembered the hand motioning of zero over the eyes from the analysts in that interview. Shockingly, one of those analysts from the interview, who's going to remain unnamed to spare the attention he was trying to get, again yesterday, despite Curry shattering one record after the other, averaging 31 points per game on an unheard of shooting split of 48, 41, and 86, one analyst went on Mike Greenberg's get up and based off this take, utterly failed at learning his lesson. I believe Steph Curry and the Warriors will win and I want you to answer the question with your fingers. Sure, no problem. I, I think that all this pettiness is just proof that they're gonna rest on their laurels. So I'll answer it with all of them. <laughs> Double zeros, we go zero goggles. I get that analyst is just trying to stir up controversy like the rest of them and make a name for himself, but it's not just him. It's the ESPN network as a whole who are out to downplay Curry's legacy as much as possible in another segment, again on Greenberg's nationally televised morning program called Get Up, Kevin Durant was brought up alongside Kobe Bryant and LeBron James as one of three notable players since 2000 to lead title teams, and of course, Curry was left off that list. I recognize Durant as one of the greatest players of this generation quite often on this channel, but making that segment so disrespectful is the fact that it took place the morning after Golden State's parade a celebration induced by Stephen Curry having an all-time great performance over six games against the generational Celtics defense. For some reason, no one's talking about how this past season, Steph broke Ray Allen's record for the all-time most three-pointers, won the All-Star Game MVP, won the Western Conference Finals MVP, became a four-time champ, and took home Finals MVP. Not mentioning Steph on the list of notable players to lead title teams since 2000 just strengthens ESPN's case, which they're incensed to make, that Durant is more important to the Warriors dynasty than Steph. Fact of the matter is, Kevin's still yet to win it all without Curry as his teammate, while Steph's proven twice now that he can go the distance without the services of Durant next to him to top it off. Kevin's team with Kyrie and Brooklyn this year was the only team to have been swept in 2022's playoffs, being taken down by Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics four times in a row during the first round. Conversely, Stephen Curry tore apart that same Celtics defense in the finals with his wizardry at passing out of double teams, relentless motion without the ball in his hands to draw gravity, and his all-time best deep range shooting stroke. You can't forget about Curry slashing to the basket offensively and his clamps locking down the perimeter defensively. Steph's finishing and defense are weapons in his bag, which are often discounted because of all the other things he's good at. Very few are going to give Curry that type of respect, and that comes down to members of the mainstream media picking and choosing whose legacies they want to promote and protect. Evidently, for whatever reason, Steph hasn't been the mainstream media's first choice to hype up. For a regular looking guy who's not six foot seven or naturally built like a typical NBA superstar, I'm sure it's easy for many people to get jealous of how Steph simply developed his strength over the years and found the most lethal deep range stroke of all time by putting in endless reps in the gym to make up for his lack of a vertical jump. Imagine a world where Curry was six foot six like MJ or six foot eight like LeBron or a seven footer like Kevin Durant but had achieved everything that Steph had throughout his career. Many would be labeling that player as the greatest of all time, 
But no, Steph looks like any other man walking down the street, therefore skeptics either intentionally or subconsciously use that as a way to tarnish everything he's accomplished. The total disregard of greatness is just mind-boggling to me, considering we're talking about the most revolutionary player that basketball's ever seen, in terms of how Curry shifted the landscape of the sport from a primarily mid-range and low-post base game, morphing it into a three-point shooting phenomenon, and whether you love or hate what the game's turned into, there's no denying how shape-shifting Steph's impact has been. When Curry merely jab steps like he does right here on Derek White, and that simple size up gets his matchup to slightly back off, you know that even slightly opened up space like that is a result of baiting his defender by perfectly mixing up his attacks, whether that's to drive, shoot, or pass. How Curry can swiftly change his offensive approach on a possession to possession basis, and also fluidly change the pace of the game, has a way of keeping the constant flow to Golden State's offense, which in turn, keeps the defense guessing. If you allow Curry to find the type of zone that he did throughout 2022's playoffs, it's bedtime. In 2022's playoffs, Curry took 10.43 point attempts per night. He made an efficient 39.7% of those shots while averaging a team high 27.4 points and 1.3 steals per game. Steph's player efficiency rating of 20.13 was the highest on the Warriors by a mile in the postseason so undeniably, the man put the team on his back, and this run from Curry kind of reminded me of Dirk Nowitzki carrying the Dallas Mavericks back in 2011, and of course Kawhi Leonard carrying my Toronto Raptors three years ago in 2019. But we have to match the horror awful takes that have been displayed in this video with some hard-hitting facts, which prove to you that with Steph, we could be watching the greatest player of all time in the making. Curry has more seasons with 200 plus three-pointers than Reggie Miller, Ray Allen, Peja Stoyakovich, Dirk Nowitzki, and Kevin Durant combined. More impressively, Wardell's one of three players ever with four plus championships, two plus MVPs, and two plus scoring titles, only next to Kareem and MJ. That settles the argument for whether or not Steph's capable of carrying a team on his own, but now for the people who try to argue the narrative that Curry folds under pressure. In response to that, over the last 10 playoffs, Steph has the most field goals made in the clutch ahead of LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and Kawhi Leonard. If media talking heads aren't going to give Curry his due respect, the numbers never tell a lie. Curry generated 1.4 billion views across all of NBA's social media platforms, while the next closest to him on that list was John ja Morant, with just over half that amount. Curry's the most marketable player in the NBA without a doubt, because at the end of the day, guy's a winner. I'll have to reveal my take in a separate upload, but in your opinion, where would you rank Curry all time? With my summer winners being set, as I announced last vid, now the top 5 commenters by September 21st receive an NBA jersey or shoe of their choosing. The speaks board is going to fill up quick, but I'm going to leave it empty for now and give two shoutouts next video for my previous upload and this one. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Appreciate every single answer. DFlow signing off.